couple things I would like to address here before I go too much further. The first thing is the amount of damage and fading and just general um, evidence of use on the orange section is significantly more intense than what's going on here on the black section. So I want to go ahead and, and try to unify that as much as possible. So I'm going to jump over to the powder coat black layer and I'm going to come over to my smart masks. That's smart materials. And I'm just going to type in paint here. And one of them is this, uh, this paint old here, which I think will probably be just fine as a starting point. So we'll just drag it into the mask stack. And what we'll see is it doesn't look exactly like we might hope right out of the, out of the, uh, the box, but that's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and activate the uh, mask view here. And so what we can see here is a lot of this is black with a little bit of white showing through, which means most of it's transparent with a little bit of the paint showing through, which is how we're getting to here. Not exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to invert the mask before I do anything else. So now it's mostly white with a little bit of stuff punched out, but it is way too much. This is over the top. So I'm going to go to my balance here right at the top of my mask and we'll just push it back a little bit. I think that's okay. Might even be a little bit too much still. Just a, we just want a little something going on. So as your eye travels over the surface, you don't go from like busted to brand new. Even though there was a little bit of edge wear, I think that this is probably going to be much better. And you can see it's actually applying that stuff back here, which is not exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to go to uh, my layer blending here and select multiply. And because as far as this layer knows, this area here is black. When I, when I select set this to multiply, we're multiplying by zero. So those pixels become fully transparent. And the other thing I want to do here is just like we've got a little bit of color variation, the sun bleaching or whatever's going on here. I'd like to have something similar over here. So I'm going to uh, hop over to powder coat once again, go down to the bottom. So this is where the color is. And I'm just going to control D on that layer. Let's go ahead and duplicate it. And I'm going to make it a lot lighter initially, just so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to add a black mask and then we'll come over and just type dust into our smart masks. And let's just kind of roll through here and see if we find one that looks promising. Whatever, we'll try dust plastic, see what that looks like. That is not nearly intense enough. We can hop over and kind of see what it thinks it's doing. We'll go dust soft. Dust soft too. That one kind of works. And we can just turn this off and on to sort of see what's going on. It might be a little bit too much. Let's see. Let's look at the color here. And I think I'm going to change the roughness too. We don't need normal height or metal. And with the painted or the, the faded paint, it should be a little bit duller probably. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And then the other thing I noticed is there's no specular breakup as we're traveling traveling along the surface here, even though there's a lot of different stuff happening. So you would expect there to be something, but it's just like a flat plane here. So let's open up that folder. The first thing I want to do is I notice I've got this nice purple stuff in here and I really want it to have a different uh, specularity to it. So I'm going to go to roughness and we'll just increase that up. So now it starts to feel a lot more like some kind of oil or something. I think we can do the same thing with our faded paint, We've got our roughness. And I'll just kind of activate that. And so now we're getting just a little bit more breakup as we travel along that surface. I'm not sure if this is really showing up too much here. And then we've got our, our more saturated paint, which I guess conceivably might be a little bit shinier, but I don't really want to go too much shinier than that. So maybe I'll just grab this one and just bump it up a little bit. So we're just trying to get as much random variation there in that highlight as possible. I think that looks a little bit better. All right, and so for this last area here, 
in the back. I think what I'm going to do is we'll just make it white. I'm not sure if that's the very best looking thing that we could do, but it'll be relatively easy because I'm just going to duplicate the orange layer because it's already got all this nice procedural stuff built into it. So let's go ahead and hit Control D on that layer. And I'm going to rename this white. Let's collapse a few of these. And I'm just going to take all of these colors. Actually, first thing I'm going to do is modify the mask so it's going to show up in the right spot. So for color selection, you can get rid of these two and select the back area. And you can see we've got some other stuff still showing up here, and that's from one of our paint layers here and our other paint layer there. So let's go ahead and get rid of those. And I think we could probably add in, this will turn that red, but that's okay. We can actually, we'll just do that with, with the paint layer. Whoops, I didn't mean to click on that. So one thing I do kind of like about this is, even though we haven't changed the color yet, I like that it gives the impression that this part is somehow connected to this part and this part and this is some kind of housing that's just going over the top of it. That sort of could qualify as a happy accident. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just have this back area here be white, although blending it might be a little bit awkward. Let me look at my material IDs one more time. So I've got this area here. I'm going to do that instead. I'm going to leave all of this stuff, uh, that orange color. And I've got this tolerance set way up high. So it was it was getting confused about something. You can see we get there's like some sweet spot in there. So this will be white. And I'm just going to grab all of my little paints here and scoot them over. So we still preserve as much of that variation as possible. And then with the orange, proper orange, I'll just come over and I think I might have, yeah, this should work okay. We'll grab that purple. And I have a, is this an adding or removing? So this paint here adds to my collection. And I wanna just go ahead and make this part of that same thing. So I'm going to do the, we'll just add the stuff in. So we'll go to brushes, basic hard, expand out a little bit. We'll hit these guys. And then this piece in here as well, I'm gonna turn on my symmetry. So I only have to do this on one side. And then I can use the polygon fill element version to hit this thing. And with symmetry on, that has all worked fairly nicely. So we can go ahead and turn symmetry off, hop back over to our regular paint mode. So there's what that looks like. Let's see what this whole area here looks like white. Sometimes you just gotta do some experimentation. See what's up. So here's our white and we will go to color variation. I'm gonna add the purple. Actually, I think that looks pretty cool. And as you can see, because we reused the, the layer with all the procedural stuff, we got to inherit a bunch of that once it landed back here. These things being orange doesn't make a huge amount of sense. So let's just, uh, I can't, I think I already put them on a they're basically, they have the same material ID, they're red. So if I do this, it's gonna turn a bunch of stuff white, which I don't wanna do. So I'm just gonna add a paint, go to polygon fill, and take care of that. All right, in the next video, we will maybe look at decals. I think decals are gonna make this uh, this whole project feel a little bit more interesting, adding all this little stuff in here. So uh, stay tuned for that.